So let me take this one step further because again, you're focusing on the rights of children and loss that they experience. The issue of marriage and divorce. Could you please speak to the issue of divorce? Because one of the things that I've seen happening in our society is that we have no fault divorce. I'll be right up front about it. No fault divorce, divorce on demand, divorce for any reason, divorce for no reason. The person who wants divorce always gets the divorce. And it seems like too much the society focuses on, well, the two parents, often it's just one parent, but the two parents, we have to worry about the parent. But what about the children? Because mm -hmm. you've talked about issues of fatherlessness and these other things that happen, and, and issues of motherlessness too, when, when they cannot see the, their mother. But what are your thoughts about divorce yeah. and creating loss? Right. Well, we take a very hard stance against no-fault divorce at them before us because we realize that the redefini right, redefinition of marriage began with no-fault divorce. Right? It didn't start with redefining marriage into a genderless institution. It started mm -hmm. with no-fault divorce. Mm -hmm. That was the point at which we said, this is no longer an institution centered around the well-being right. of children. This is now a vehicle for adult fulfillment. Right. right. Now it has everything to do with whether or not the adults are happy. Right. And if that's the definition of marriage, of course you can end it. Right. right. And of mm -hmm. course, any two people, it doesn't have to be a man or woman, can enter it. And for that matter, three people or four or more people. If marriage is all about with whom you share love and connection, right. then it, you can marry anybody, however many, whoever, with yes. whom you share, and you can end it yeah. when you cease experiencing the love and connection. Yeah. The problem with that, of course, is that mm -hmm. divorce drastically decreases the amount of contact children have with one or both parents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And kids are made for daily input, daily interaction, daily right. love, correction, discipline, nourishing, nurturing with both of their parents. Right. And they lose that with divorce. Now, there are difficult situations where divorce is necessary. Serious cases of abuse, serious cases of addiction, um, abandonment, but in those cases, Government needs to be on the side of the innocent party, right. right? The full force of the courts needs to align themselves with the parent that is trying to keep things together and mm -hmm. do the right thing. Right. Okay, so as you know, uh, no-fault divorce incentivizes bad behavior, mm -hmm. right? It, it literally gives the most power to the spouse who wants the marriage the least. Right. Okay, now, uh, divorce is an ace for kids, right? An adverse childhood experience. Absolutely. Okay, and it creates uh, stress and trauma and that ace usually leads to other aces, right? Kids who go through divorce right. are much more likely to experience all kinds of other childhood struggles and issues and traumas. And so divorce is not, as we often think about it, a, a bad cold. Kids are going to just get over it. Mm -hmm. It is the beginning mm -hmm. of multiple losses, transitions, and changes that kids are going to have to bear, mm -hmm. okay? And so it's it's nothing to sniff at. Divorce is a really big deal, right. um, and we don't spend enough time focusing on it. So the way that I've tried to approach it with some people is to say that marriage is for the children, divorce is for both adults, maybe it's for one adult, mm -hmm. but marriage is for the children, children before adult. I think we're coming at the same issue, the, the same problem from the same perspective, more or less, mm -hmm. but um, would you agree with that assessment then as far as marriage is not for adult fulfillment? As nice as that is, but marriage is for the children. Divorce, I think divorce is one of the most cruel things you can do to it a is. child. You're right. You're exactly right. I, um, I have grown men who are lawyers working high power jobs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who I start talking about this and they have to leave the room because it's been 30 years. Right. Right. But they still are like, that was the most painful thing I've ever gone through. Yeah. And here's the thing. Whenever you're talking about family fragmentation, that is not parental death. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does not matter what it is. The missing, when there's a parent that's missing or there's fragmentation, the kid always thinks it was me. It was me. I did you, it. You know what? <laughs> Sorry. You're absolutely right. Yep. Yep. When I remember with the same thing that when my, I'm sorry, <laughs> I wasn't expecting you know this what? to take Some place. Some things but, are worth crying over. Yeah, but I remember when my parents got divorced. They went, what could I have done differently? Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. I wasn't expecting this at all. Hey, you know but, what? This is, this is the lens of the child. Mm -hmm. We have to look at this from the kid's perspective because 
I mean, I don't know how old you are. I'm gonna go with early 50s, okay? Thank you, that's very kind of you. Okay, <laughs> and my guess is this happened 40 years ago, maybe. Yeah, it happened. Well, that's pretty close to right. Okay, yep. right. Not a lot of things make you cry like this that happened 40 years ago. Right. Right, but when the two people that a child loves the most don't love each other anymore, how else are they supposed to, how, what else are they supposed to do? Right. Right? And it lasts a lifetime. Yeah. Okay, so we need to stop playing around yeah. with marriage um, because it is a children's rights issue. It's a social justice issue for mm -hmm. children. It is the social justice issue for children that will determine whether or not, well, I'm not saying they're doomed. Right. But it's one of the major pieces that determine whether they thrive or whether they flail. Right, right. And the, um, looking at the issue of divorce, um, you know, when we've talked about pro-life issues, the church is out in front, we're gonna be pro-life. Um, we talk about same-sex marriage, and the church is gonna be fighting that. This is the call of God, to fight against same-sex marriage. When it comes down to the issue of divorce, mm -hmm. nearly a word. Right, it's difficult, right, because you've got some passages it's an open and shut case with abortion. Right. We don't kill babies. Right. Right. Uh, it's an open and, from a scriptural perspective, it's an open and shut case with same-sex marriage. Right. No. Right. There is nothing in scripture that condones any kind of same-sex sexual behavior. Every example that we have about sex that is condoned is within heterosexual, heterosexual marriage. Right. Right. Divorce is difficult because there are, there is wiggle room in scripture for it. Right. Mm -hmm. For the hardness of your heart, you know, there are passages that allude to it, but you're exactly right. The church has lost its moral courage yeah. on this issue. And as a result, it has allowed some kids to take the brunt of their parents' decisions, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the exact opposite of what the church is supposed to be doing, right. right? The church is supposed to be encouraging adults to do hard things right. so that children are protected, right? And if, if the church is looking for uh, some kind of mandate from scripture, take a look at how many times fatherlessness is mentioned and what the church is supposed to do about it, mm -hmm. right? We're supposed to protect them. We're supposed to prevent it. But divorce, donor conception, all these other manifestations of the family is endorsing and encouraging fatherlessness, mm -hmm. right? We are supposed to protect orphans, not manufacture them, okay? All of these decisions that we're making about marriage and family that we get wrong, that's exactly what we're doing. So is divorce sin? Yeah, I'm well, saying, okay, of course, you know, it. Divorce happens as a result of sin one way or another. Mm -hmm. um, but in many instances, it's when you look at no-fault divorce against a person who doesn't even want a divorce, too often the church almost, it, 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 it almost takes the side of the person who's transgressing. Yes, that's and exactly it, right. And now, it causes moral confusion right. to a child. Right. In fact, you know, people don't talk about this, but you hear about these children that said, the day my parents got divorced was the day that I quit believing in God. Yes. Because how could God let this happen to my family? Yeah. And anyway, yes. go ahead. No, you are exactly right. And it has that kind of impact on you because it needs to. Mm -hmm. It needs to have that kind of impact. Why is that? Because God actually uses marriage to tell us something about himself, mm -hmm. right? He says, Jesus says, I'm the groom, mm -hmm. you're the bride. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of devotion I have for you and mm -hmm. that you should have for me. Mm -hmm. The kind of devotion that you see between your mom and dad. Yeah. Okay? That's, that's supposed to be your first picture of my love for you. Yeah. So, when the first picture that God gives children of his love for the church, when they see those two people calling it quits, what do you think they're supposed to think about God's love for them? That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. The issue of the children then, as far as the children of divorce, uh, too often it seems like the church is saying, oh, you know, like, chin up, move forward, you'll get over it. Um, isn't that abusive? Isn't that condoning <laughs> abuse? So one of the biggest problems that I find in the work that I'm doing, which is capturing the stories of children who 
who have not had their rights protected because adult desire was prioritized above their rights. So those are kids who are conceived through sperm and egg donation and surrogacy, kids who have same-sex parents who the parents intentionally kind of force the kids to fit into their life, um, and children of divorce. Those are the three main categories where adult desire is prioritized above the rights of the child. Mm -hmm. In all of those situations, every single one of those categories of kids mm -hmm. are incredibly fearful mm -hmm. about sharing the truth, right. about how that impacted them. Right. Right. And I think one of the bigger problems is we tell those kids, you're so lucky. Oh, your parents are divorced? You're so lucky. You now have two Christmases. You're so lucky. Now you have two houses. Mm -hmm. You're so lucky. Now you have four people to love you instead of just two, yeah. right? And so the child is experiencing loss, sadness, distress, sometimes confusion, sometimes fear and anger, and they're not seeing any of that mirrored in the adults around them. Right. Um, this, was, this is especially the case with some kids with same-sex parents um, that have shared their stories on our site um, where they say, I really wish I had a dad. And they hear from their parents or the world, no, you don't. You've got two moms who love you. Mm -hmm. You're so lucky. Mm -hmm. Not many kids have two parents who love them, but mm -hmm. you do. Yeah. You're so lucky. So what that does is it's actually kind of a form of gaslighting. Yes. Right? Yeah. Where the child then goes, okay, they're, ex they're experiencing these completely natural feelings, mm -hmm. right, of longing for their missing parent or mm -hmm. feeling sad or distressed that their parents broke up. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's telling them that there shouldn't be anything wrong. Right. But the child, so the child goes, okay, there must be something wrong with me. With me, right. There must be something wrong with me that I feel this way. Right, right. When really what they're doing is they're just feeling what every other human child has felt yeah. all throughout history. Yeah. I just think it's a, it's a crying shame for me coming from the church perspective to say, where is the church? Why is the church not vocally opposed to this? You know, the, the issue with no-fault divorce has led to many of these other issues. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the issue of divorce and what you said earlier about fatherlessness and stuff like that, or, or you know, missing a parent, the, the effects of divorce often last throughout a lifetime. Yes. They get buried, but the other thing is they become transgenerational. Right. Yep, you're right. So kids of divorce are to, like, twice as likely to divorce themselves and actually just more likely to never marry. Right. Right, they look at that and they go, well, that was terrible and that was painful. Mm, I'm never gonna do that. Yeah. I'm never gonna do that. So do you think, and like, this will be the last question for you here, um, as far as the state, should the state, my, my argument is this right now, in the state of Texas, I don't think that there's any legal protection for marriage. We have a, a, a statute in our Texas Family Code 6.001 talks about insupportability on the petition of either spouse. And the petition can be a, a made up petition. It doesn't have to be true. There's no facts behind it. It can be whatever. That on that petition, a judge may grant a divorce without any type of ruling of fault. But the reality is the judge always, 100%, without exception, no exceptions, um, will grant a divorce. It's forced divorce. It's divorce on demand. Our state policy is that family is not important. We say it's important. Mm -hmm. But in practice, our state policy says, this family is a temporary family. You cannot even, if you are two Christian people, mm -hmm. and say, you know what, this is a marriage to God. This is, a, this is a commitment to God. And one person backslides, the state will side with the backslider because the backslider says, well, you know what, I find it ins insupportable. And what you said earlier, this insupportability thing covers up a lot of evil. If I were somebody who was meeting my wife and said, well, you know, she doesn't like it, so it's insupportable. Or, you know, my, my wife would be somebody who's having affairs with different men and said, you know what, it's so much more exciting with him, he takes me out to eat. By contrast, my marriage is insupportable. Wait a minute, you're, you're making the other person feel as if they're guilty, like, what did I do? Why am I going through this? And the guilty person skates and our courts almost always side with the guilty person. And when you look at children that see this stuff going on, I, I, I really think this, some of the violence that you see in family courts, because divorce is violence, you've got to say, this is what the, the Bible says, it's, it's like a man putting a bloody garment on himself if he's divorcing his wife. He's committed murder. 
That's what that's what it is. They the kid the kids see this violence and the, and then you know they're going to replicate it later on in their lives. Or like you talked about the ACE study, mm -hmm. and you know when when the ACEs start to pile up, mm -hmm. you've given the person a shortened lifespan. Right. This is abuse, mm -hmm. and and to me I have such a strong dislike for the fact that you really in our state in Texas and almost in every state throughout the country there is actually no legal protection for marriage. Right. Well, it's, it's a and, big problem. And a lot of times policies will de-incentivize. Not just is it it's not just neutral, right? right? It's that it's actually has some policies in place that de-incentivize parents staying together or right. parents committing to be together in right. the first place, right? So there, there's two things that have to happen, right? We have to uh -huh. change hearts right. so people understand uh -huh. that it's not a cost-free choice right. to leave a marriage, you know, or to use a sperm or egg donor, or uh -huh. to um, order your life and your children around your romantic inclinations in a uh -huh. way that excludes one of their parents, right? right? Um, so we have to change hearts so people understand that, and we have to change laws. Mm -hmm. Right, we have to figure out exactly how to target certain laws so that we can start to emphasize the rights of kids. Because right. the the good news is, it's kind of a one shot wonder. Mm -hmm. If you emphasize the rights of kids, you solve all of these other issues that we're facing related right. to marriage and family. Right, right. So tell us again about your website and about your work, so that anybody who wants to learn more. And by the way. I get your stuff every day. Yay! <laughs> I love what you do. Um, I share almost everything that comes across my my Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving so many people a voice. Yeah. Uh, but please, for other people that might be watching, tell us about your website yeah. again. It's thembeforeus.com. Um, you'll find the stories of kids right on the homepage. Um, you'll find kind of the basics of children's rights. Um, you can look at all of the latest articles, um, everything else that we've got going on. We major on humanizing the child and sharing their story so that everybody knows who they're fighting for. Yeah. Right? You're fighting for the kids, and that's something that we can all get on board yeah. with. Well, thank you so much. You're, you're really a hero. Oh, to my me. gosh. So, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>